All right, James, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. Yourself? Uh, I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. It's good to. Uh, uh, I know we've been talking about doing the doing the pod for for a little bit. I'm glad we finally were able to uh, connect and make it happen, dude. Yeah, man. I know we were both busy. I remember seeing uh, back when I was on social media, you traveling with the fam, and then I traveled pretty much all of September. And I was trying to make it work, but I was like, ah, damn, I leave. I got I got like three days to do work before I head out and uh and be on vacation and tapped out of everything so i was like i i thought i had time but i didn't have time because you know how it is like especially when it's a friend yeah like, oh yeah I'll, I'll make time i'll make time and you get to thinking you're like wait a minute what the hell am i thinking i don't have time <laughs> <laughs> it's all good no i, I knew i knew we so, i knew we'd get it figured out and yeah just so just so everybody knows i actually met james in person a few months ago with our mutual friend carter good caitlin piles uh i went down to austin we we all got to hang out we had a we had a great time, and so so yeah, I knew that uh, I knew that just right away. I could tell that our energies matched uh, a lot, and I and you know of yeah. course mutual friends speak highly of you as well. So I was like, yeah, definitely, definitely got to make the podcast happen and um, give give the people what they want, you know. Yeah, it was a matter of time too because I had seen you um, obviously like from hanging out with Carter and what I had seen you two connecting and whatnot and uh just knew it was a matter of time before yeah. you and i both both cross paths and then to find out that we're like next door when it comes to state time in ohio or you're in kentucky mm-hmm. like makes it even better i know we talk about us two getting together because like every time i i link with you know the chrome is going on to austin but to have someone that's kind of close where i can come down to kentucky you can because you're in yeah. louisville right uh, i'm in lexington so it's about lexington. It's, yeah yeah One of the L's. close <laughs> close yeah, yeah yeah you're right you're right yeah um so which is like what is that like a three-hour drive i think away from columbus where yeah. i'm at yeah. yeah, so not bad at all. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, and we'll, we're we're definitely going to make that happen too. Um, all right, real quick, just for the for, get the formal introductions out of the way. Just for f- I, how I do it is usually for people who who don't know you. Whenever you meet somebody for the first time, and they're like, "Hey, James, what do you do? Like, what what do you kind of tell them?" Yeah. So uh, the, the the first thing I tell them is I do a little bit of everything. So <laughs> it's yeah. wild how my journey has been, but uh, but obviously uh, I'm in the fitness coaching space, so. Um, I work with former athletes being a former athlete myself. So I have, you know, former pro athletes, soccer, football, uh, college athletes and high school athletes and in general population. But um, I work with former athletes on obviously um, the mindset, health, fitness, all those fun things. Uh, that's where my passion lies. But um, outside of that, I'm still growing uh, my fitness business. So I have a full time corporate job. Um, I've been in uh, leadership roles for now, like 12, 11 years or 11, 12 years where I've worked for a couple of different corporations, but uh, the one that I work for now um, is a healthcare tech startup company um, who's just looking for leaders that are able to help build teams. And that's something that I'm strong in. And I obviously, you know, serve the mission of that company, but I also do their corporate wellness. Uh, so adding on to the, the things that I do as well. So um, I focus on the, the physical wellness aspect where I provide tools, resources. I've actually had Carter uh, come speak to the team on just oh. how to make fitness easy. So he's come and spoke to the to our our um, our employees, and then I've also you you probably met Sean McDivitt. Mm-hmm. He's also come and spoke uh, came and spoke to our team as well. So I lead that initiative as well um, with the corporation. Um, obviously, uh, I'm a father, so I have twin boys who are freshmen in high school, which is crazy because people look at me and they're like, "Yo, you, you look like you just graduated high school." And I'm like, "No, I'm 34 years old," but. Uh, you're like you're journey. like they're not my little brothers they're not my little yeah, brothers yeah, yeah everywhere we go people are like oh yeah your little brothers are so cute i'm like ah, those are my sons but thank you and it's to a point now where we don't even explain it we just accept whatever it is that that you're person just like yeah, yeah yeah they're my they're my brothers yeah yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be in line you know doing like shopping and whatnot and people say we just just go with it because we're just tired <laughs> of explaining it but uh yeah so uh I feel father, um uh and then obviously you've probably seen them on social media you know i i, I love doing extreme sports so i skydive um and i I love everything scott i'm into music uh super heavy so um a little secret that not too many people know about is i have a dj board arriving today so that's gonna be that's gonna be my next adventure uh during the uh during the winter but but yeah so the so your listeners on the podcast you guys get a little insights i haven't told anybody (laughs) but carter so oh uh, shit so yeah so that's something that i'll that i'll pick up in the winter as it gets cold and skydiving won't be as prevalent in the uh, winter months here in ohio so right in a nutshell that's kind of who I am. Um, I'm, I love I'm super it. focused on mindset, super spiritual, and uh, yeah. yeah, 
Awesome. That, that's, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. That that's a, that's a nice little sum up there. I like it. And we're definitely don't don't worry. We're definitely gonna we're gonna touch on the DJ board. We're gonna get into that for sure. <laughs> I do just uh, I just I wanted to touch on. I, I would be remiss to not kind of touch on this topic since obviously you know from experience and things uh, as far. So talk to me about. So you were a former athlete. So I know you know being from Kentucky, you're a Ohio State boy. I get it. It's all good. It's fine. Um, but so so what 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 sport did you play in, in college? And did you play like all four years or how did that kind of go yeah yeah so i uh i ran track at the <laughs> university or uh, the right. Ohio State university yeah 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 so uh so yeah so i was there all, all well actually i was only there for three of my five years in college so i originally had a scholarship to akron university which you may be familiar mm-hmm. with yeah. out there in the mac yeah and um and that's what my scholarship was originally to out of uh ohio state but um i had my twin boys uh uh, my sophomore year of college. And for me, it was like, you know, I, I didn't want to be a statistic and I wanted to make sure that I was there as a father figure for my kids. So, um, uh, you know, I was, I was blessed to be able to have my scholarship transferred to Ohio state, which is crazy because they did not recruit me coming out of, uh, out of high school because of the coach that was over the program at the time who had, uh, left when I had a twins and they brought in a new coach who came from the Mac and recruited me uh, just based off of his knowing of, or I guess not recruiting me, but, um, when found out that I had my medical release papers, uh, had interest in me being a part of the team and, uh, everything always works out, which is literally the motto of my life is that life is always happening for you. Um, no matter what the circumstance is, but, um, that's how I ended up being at Ohio state, um, yeah. running track there. I was a big 10 champ. Um, what'd you run? Uh, what'd so you do? I ran the, I ran the hundred, the 200, the four by one, Oh damn! Um, and, you got and, the you and, got you got the fucking jets, huh? Because those are no <laughs> joke. Yeah, I, I had the, I had the jets back then. Now I, I probably am just as, I'm probably faster than the average person, but in the yeah yeah the, for, uh, sport, hey, for, not, for sure not fast, for sure yeah. faster than the average person, James, who fucking <laughs> ran the, the 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 sprints in college. Yeah, man, you're yeah. good, man. You're good. You got yeah, that covered. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so, um, yeah, all four years there. Uh, the cool thing is, is that I let her at two colleges, which most people don't. Don't get to say so. Um, I was also a Mac, a Mac champ in the four by one at Akron. Uh, wow. So, okay. So yeah, Let's man, go. So I, have, I have championship rings. I have the Letterman jackets. I have all man. So I uh, he, he, he's, he's signing autographs after the podcast. I promise. <laughs> yeah. No one cares anymore. Like I don't. I don't even. I guess it's barely ever a conversation. They they want to talk about other things rather than sure. my, my sports career. But sure. But yeah, man. Sure. Uh, so I was at a house at all four years. Um, lettered. Uh, and, and had a really good experience. I was a, a captain of the track team for the sprint squad. Yeah. Um, so leadership has always been a part of kind of, you know, my DNA, my makeup. So that, so yeah, being with, being with the other athletes and things like that. And it sounds like with your career now as well. Yeah. That leadership position just kind of that it just, you fit right in. Did you just kind of happen naturally? Is this just something that you've kind of always had or did, have you worked at it or a little bit of both maybe? Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I, I would say uh, something that had come naturally uh, just from excelling at sports. So I, I started playing sports at age four um, and then that obviously carried all the way through college. I didn't go pro. Uh, but a lot of what I always tell people um, about sports is a lot of it translates into uh, into your life once sports is done. And, and yeah. um, a lot of times us former athletes have an issue making that transition from, hey, I've been an athlete my whole life. That's been my identity. Um, once sports is done, they kind of find themselves in this search for a new identity when in reality, yeah. everything that you learn from sports, you just, uh, you just translate it into life. And, yep. um, and that's kind of how I got into to my business because I've actually experienced that transition as a struggle. Yeah. Where I was completely did, off focus. Did you, and, did you want to be pro? Did you, did you have intentions of going pro? Uh, I, I think I always had intentions of it, um, but always knew that I needed a plan B, uh, just because like, as I began to progress through college, I mean, it's, it's, to be a pro athlete is a huge, like, task it's, to have, Especially right? with and the boys you, too, right? Sorry oh, to cut yeah, you yeah, off. Yeah, I'll do sure. that sometimes. But yeah, with the no, boys too, it makes it yeah. essential. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, I remember, you know, twin boys at that, you know, at a young age, uh, very challenging. Uh, I was sleep deprived. So not at my most optimal. I bet. Uh, I bet. But, but, uh, but at the end of the day, um, uh, that that was a goal, but I always knew that I needed to have something else uh, set up. And you know, once sports is done, that identity 
crisis is a thing uh, that a lot of how did, athletes experience. How, how have you managed that? How because I because I kind of I, I didn't go through well not the exact same thing but just real quick on me mine was mine was bodybuilding right so I, I yeah. did drug tested bodybuilding I competed in competitions I actually became a pro in the in, in the drug tested yeah. space and then basically as soon as I got pro I was like all right, I don't want to kind of do this anymore. I didn't care enough yeah. to like go to that pro level of the, the shit that I would have to do. But then I was into more like nor more like uh, I had other priorities, right? I wanted to focus on my career. I want to focus on relationships, hobbies, all these different things, right? And so what the problem was, my, my expectations were still bodybuilder Matt, right? Who was going to the gym yeah. six times a week and looked a certain way and, and, and was, you know, had these certain strength levels and everything like that. And then now I'm transitioning, right? So it's just kind of like that was something that I struggled with. So what advice did it either work for you or work with the people that you work with maybe. Yes. Yeah, side, side note, uh, Carter and I, we were creeping on your bodybuilding. He was in town, uh, this past weekend yeah. and, and, uh, you had, I think you may have posted something. He's like, dude, look yeah. at that man. He, he was so jacked. I'm like, fuck, like he, he, he is fucking jacked. <laughs> yeah. like, looking at, like looking at the picture because you know, I, I actually had, um, I actually transitioned into bodybuilding as well. That was like sure. kind of how I found my identity. Competition. Um, yeah, it was competition. That, that's uh, what I did out of high school. I, I, I yeah. was in high school football. It's not the same as collegiate, right? But after high school football, I was like, I need something competitive. So I got into bodybuilding. Yeah. 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 That was it. So literally the same exact journey for myself was um, someone was in a gym and they were like, you should do bodybuilding competitions. I'm, I'm not doing that. Like, it, like at the time, what I thought bodybuilding competitions was, was like, you're out there in the like little leotard thing and uh, you know, you're flexing. Yeah, I'm like that's not that's just not my thing. I'm not. I, don't, I have no desire to be that big. Yeah, and, um, yeah, that's sure. just not me. But uh, I I realized that soon that there's other divisions within bodybuilding, and that's how I got sure. into men's physique. Yep. Um, uh, competitive. I did. I was in the NPC. Um, okay. Right. So, yeah, All right. Good deal. Yeah, so I was in there and and. I played for. I did fairly well. Like I missed my pro card by like one spot, and that was when I realized I was like, all right, like I don't even care. Like. Cause I was in the best shape of my life. And I'm like, I'm like, how? Like I'm the guy that, who beat me. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, this dude, like how did this guy beat me? Cause I was, I was really good at posing. Like sure. I was like one of the top in posing. Sure. And it was, and this is obviously an investment piece that goes with it. And for me, um, at the time I realized I had a ton of people. I was working with the coach for like three or four years. Um, like we all do, right. We have coaching and, and anything we do, right. I always go back to like, yo, coaching, <laughs> like, like if you want to do anything in your life and you want to excel at it, Find someone that is a reliable coach and invest in yourself, A, not only for the betterment of your your uh, your understanding, but also so then that way you can maybe miss some of the mistakes you would make if you were on your own, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, just for better understanding. So yeah, I did that for for uh, like four or five years um, when I when I was still searching for that. And that's how I got into health and fitness. Sort of like you, I was working out six, seven days a week. I was just eating straight, clean broccoli, chicken, yeah. rice, yeah. tilapia. I don't even eat tilapia anymore. That's how sick of tilapia <laughs> yeah. I am. Yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. I was super extreme uh, on one side of the fitness kind of where I've had that same realization that there's more to my uh, my well-being than just being physically fit. And that's how I tapped into, you know, how my body feels. So stretching, um, you know, I do yoga. I more so do uh, uh, Ramwad. You probably heard that range of motion mm -hmm. movement of the day. Um, so I do that to, to really make sure my joints, I'm 34, I don't look it, but I, one thing I don't want to do is neglect, you know, my mobility. Yeah. And then as I get older, next thing, you know, I'm like aching and stuff because I, I did obviously, I, you know, do bodybuilding, which is heavy lifting, which is hard on your joints. I obviously was an explosive, uh, athlete. Sure. Where, you know, those moves are heavy. Now it's all about preserving those joints. And I just want to look like an athlete now yeah. and, uh, and have yeah. a holistic, um, approach towards wellness, you know, how, how are things going up here and, and how I'm internalizing the day to day um, situation scenarios, both positive and, you know, maybe opportunistic where I'm able to, to assess them in a way that makes me overall great. Right. And, and it's so funny. It's like it started off with, hey, I just want to be in shape because I had gotten off focus, you know, for about, I'd say, a year and a half, two years after sports was done. So I was like, well, now it's my freedom time because I had done sports my whole life where I missed out on like spring breaks and all that fun stuff. And I'm like, it's time to party. And I party my ass off. Next thing you know, and, and I didn't have a weight gain issue. I had a weight loss issue. I was freaking 135 pounds at 5'8". It's a 25 year old male. Yeah. And I'm like, I look like a little 13 year old boy. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know how all that can, can play into your life. Of course. Um, I know, yeah. I know. But the listeners have no sympathy for you right now. They're like, no, bro, I do zero. not care. I do zero. not care yeah. how hard it is for you to gain yeah. weight. 
<laughs> you know, that's, that's, yep. that's funny. Yeah. That's, yep. that sounds so, about right. So yeah, man, the, the biggest thing I, I would say, like a, a advice for those that are, you know, maybe if you're a former athlete or you're someone that has an identity crisis, you know, uh, where you're trying to make a transition, um, from, you know, one identity to other is realize that your life is uh, a journey of understanding who you are. It's not a destination, right? You one one minute sports may be the thing. The next minute, it may be your mobility. The next minute, it may be your mindset. Like it's always going to transition, but understanding that you aren't those specific areas of your life and that it's a, it's a forever journey of understanding yourself. Once you get to that place and then also couple that with uh, understanding who you'll listen to. I think, I think that's another thing that's really important too, is like, as you're on these different journeys, finding someone that you trust and that you listen to, to help guide you is also important too, because, you know, it'll be times when you, you think you found someone and, you, and they'll end up maybe not being a good fit, but that's also a part of learning more about yourself, right? And who you work right. well with, who you don't work well with. So I, I would always, the first thing is like understanding that, that your identity is not in a particular moment of your life or it's not in a particular thing. Um, there's, it's, you know, life is always going to be something that you're exploring yourself with, right? The things you like, things you don't right. like. It's, um, it's, it's not static. It's dynamic, yeah. right? It's, it's a fluid. Exactly. It's an ongoing practice refinement over time. Yep, exactly. And then the next thing is, is just finding someone that you trust that you, that to help guide you through all those different stages of your life as you continue to understand yourself, right? Um, and, and knowing that there's going to be those valleys, peaks of valleys as you go along the way. Yeah. Uh, I think that takes away a lot of the stress of, you know, trying to identify self. So, yeah, you know, you know, what's interesting about your story is very similar with, with mine and with, with other people that I, that I talk to as well, just as you get older, but it's just like, I think everybody start a lot or a, not everybody, a lot of people start off in the fitness industry, um, with more aesthetics goals, right? It's just like, you just want to look better. Right. And that yeah. kind of gets the snowball going with, with motivation and getting into it and stuff. You just, you want it, you want to look better. You start lifting and stuff. That's what happens. Right. But then I think at some point after you've kind of, uh, mastered that or, or whatever you want to call it, right. Then it gets into the stage that I think that we're in, which is more like, I just want to feel good on a regular yeah. basis, you know? And I think that some, some lifting comes with that, but then also, like you said, some mobility, some yoga, some, some, some other things like that. So I'm wondering, cause I also know that you, you love, uh, you, you have, like you said, spiritual, you have different practices and stuff that you do each day. What are maybe some things that you do on a regular basis that just like makes you feel good, right? I know you have the fucking great energy. It's like, do you, and I know that yeah. you, I know that you, some of that is obviously instilled with you for, through, through just being born, but then like yeah. on a daily basis, how do you continue to, to cultivate that and maybe tips for, for people listening? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Uh, and I actually did a, a, a session on my, uh, on my Instagram about this, where I talked about, you know, your morning routine, how they actually are not your morning routines and they actually can work against you. Um, and, and, and the one way that I look at just like, kind of like how I prep myself for the day is, is I just have a toolbox that has a freaking dope amount of different things that I can pull from to engage in in the morning to allow me to show up for myself at best. A lot of times people think your morning routine is like, oh, I wake up in the morning, I take my cold shower. After my cold shower, I read for 20 minutes. After I read for 20 minutes, I meditate for 20 more minutes. After <laughs> that, then I didn't stretch. And I get a cup of coffee, I take my protein shake. It's so rigid, right? Um, and they're like, I do this every day, right? Well, have you ever thought that maybe that's not what you need for the day, right? Maybe you need something different. So um, what I always suggest for people is like, instead of putting your box, your brain in a box by saying, these are the things I do every single day, give your brain the ability to expand upon what your daily routine is and have a toolbox. So I have a toolbox of like 10 to 12 different things that I can do in the morning to set myself up for the day. Um, I could have had a, uh, uh, a lack of sleep, let's say the night before. Uh, where meditation may be something that I want to set myself up with, where I'm just peaceful, relaxing still as I wake up in the morning. So then that way I set myself up. Um, maybe the the day before or the previous days, I, I've been really intense in my workouts where like, okay, Ramwa may make sense for me today and meditation, right? So I always tell people like, it's better because you, you got to think about your brain like this. Like it, the more you put it into a box, the more rigid it is and the less opportunity for growth and uh, uh, that you set yourself up for the day. So I always say is like, depending on the day you wake up, like give your brain the freedom to think right outside the box because you're already setting yourself up for new opportunities, right? 
um, and, and, and you're also not, you know, creating walls for creativity, uh, which, you know, for you as a creative, you know, that's the last thing we want is to be in a box. And, yeah. um, I, I always tell people, I'm like, you know, my clients, I'm like, Hey, like gather list. I want you to come up with like 10, 10 things, like five to 10 things that, that you can do. And even if it's not five, like whatever you feel like you can do in the morning to set yourself up for success, just write them down. Right. And then each morning, give your brain the autonomy to think about what it is you need for that day in order to uh, be at your best, right? So for me this morning, you know, uh, all I did was, I, I all I actually had time was to, to take my kids to school, right? Yeah. Here's a perfect example. Like yeah. maybe you might not always have time to, to do those things that you have set out. And then what you end up doing is because you don't have time, you end up beating yourself up and saying, well, damn, I didn't do everything I had in my morning routine today. So what does that do? Yeah. Create that automatic negative thought process that starts your loop off in a negative way. So today, my sons have to be at school at 7 a.m. I get up at 4.45 a.m. I didn't have time to really uh, do, you know, I wouldn't have time to do everything that I would normally do in the morning. So, um, today gratitude journal, that's something that's like a no brainer for me. Yeah. Um, you know, just because it already gets your brain in the mindset of recognizing, you know, what you're thankful for. So then you can continue to appreciate the small things. So then you're not getting yourself, you know, off track with your, your thoughts. Sure. And then also that, uh, affirmation of the day, you know, I am statements. Uh, those are things that I work on. Um, and then I just did a quick 20 minute stretch. That's what I needed today. Cause I did leg day yesterday. So I'm yeah. like, okay, Go to my toolbox today. What am I going to pick out? Here's a time, the circumstance. I got to take my boys to school. I can't just give all this time back to myself like I normally could. Today will make sense. My gratitude journaling and stretching. My body's freaking sore as hell. That's what I got in, and I feel good. Like I, now, I like that's what I needed today. I'm not stressed that um, that I didn't do any meditation. I'm not stressed that I didn't read for 20 minutes today. I'm not stressed because or looking at myself in a failure yeah. because I didn't do everything in my arsenal of, of things to, to set myself up for success for the day. Right. And, yeah. and, and I also had a dentist appointment today and I had to get my hair cut this morning. So like I had a bunch of things on my right. schedule that, uh, didn't allow for me to do, you know, uh, you know, you know, settle into like a morning routine that is so rigid, right. It, it allows that flexibility. So yeah. long winded answer for your question, but that's kind of no, like how that's... I approach, approach those routines in the morning and set myself up to be the most uh, present. And I can show up for this podcast in a way that allows me to feel good about being here. You know, those that report to me at my job, um, I'm, I'm a bit readily available. My energy's right. And I feel good. I'm already setting myself up for a, a, a solid day. Not to say that I don't expect anything to go off course, but if it does, my mindset's in a good place to, to be able to handle it appropriately. Yeah, no, I, yeah, fucking love it, dude. Because I think it's something that I definitely think about a lot and it's, it's not necessarily time management, but it's energy management. Right. And it's, yep. it's kind of just whatever uh, I love that. It's just kind of whatever your body needs that morning. And then also what's practical, right? You got to take your kids to school, right? It's just yeah. like, sometimes you don't have time for all these things, but it's just like, what is, what is one of the, th the things that I can give me right now that will yeah. allow me to, to start the day on a positive note. But I, yeah, no, I, I really love the, the energy management side of things and which, is actually something that I had something I had written down was actually your energy contrast, right? Because you know, talking yeah. with you right now, you're you know, you're you're level headed, you can be articulate, you're you're introspective, clearly you think about a lot of these things. And I know that you follow you on Instagram and things, right? You you even the last post that you had was was you just basically like chilling, right? You and you talk about meditating and you talk about, you know, calming the mind and, and calming the noise and all these different things, but then also you're fucking jumping out of planes, bro. It's just like, it's just like, I, talk to me a little bit about this, like yin and yang you've got going on of just like, why is skydiving super cool and important to you? And then also just like chilling and, and meditating and just really being calm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a really good question. Yeah, I am jumping out. People always think it's crazy. I, I real, I'm like, why are people driving in cars? I mean, like those are more dangerous than actually jumping out of a plane. Like, that's you know, fair. The statistics, right? That's fair. Uh, uh, of like kind of like the danger. And I think a lot of people just have a lack of awareness around how safe skydiving really is because we, because it like anyone's going to, any normal person is probably like, why the hell would you jump out of a perfectly working fine airplane? Like what, what is the point of that? Right. Like the plane's sure. fine. Why are we jumping out of it? Um, but, um, when did you jump out of the first one? Sorry to cut you off. When did you jump out of the first, first I time? Did a tan I did a tandem back in 2016. I always had it in the back of my head that I wanted to learn how to do it on my own, but I just, once again, just me, it's like the timing is right. I like to follow the flow of life. So the timing wasn't right until this year, which my first time jumping out solo was April 16th this year. And today I have in 25 jumps, which I would say I did the last 15 in the last two months because I had to get my license before 
uh, before I started getting cold out because then I have to take the class all over if I waited till next year. I just wasn't doing that. So I'm like, I'm going to make it time to like jump out, jump out. It makes it makes it miles. makes my palms sweaty just thinking. About it. I, I'm so <laughs> I'm so terrified of heights, bro. Real quick, I played I played a VR game. And it was one where you can like stand on a plate, a plank, like a piece of wood yeah. sticking out of a building. And yeah, I had the VR goggles, <laughs> bro. I even yeah. looked down. I, my, I was, I didn't want to jump. And I was like, I know that there's just floor in front of me, but I didn't yeah. want to take a step forward. Like my hands get sweaty just thinking about it. So obviously I'm assuming like, have you, you've all, have you been like in it? Like roller coasters don't bother you. Adrenaline junkie oh, type yeah. shit. You're like, yeah, no, sign yeah, me up. Yeah. Yeah, that's how roller coasters got boring. That's how I was like, oh, okay, like, <laughs> roller coasters I'm like got doing boring. Every, I'm okay. like doing everything to make me feel that like but the butterflies. I'm like, like I figured out when you go down hills on roller coasters, like to really like feel the intense intensity of it. Yeah. Take a deep breath right when you're hitting like and then as you're going down, let it all out. And you, and you just really get that like weightlessness feeling. The butterflies are like right. maximal. So like I, yeah, I'm just an adrenaline junkie at heart. But uh kind of going back to uh, to kind of like the balancing of like my energy and all that fun thing. Like the one thing that I use, uh, so my life, my, majority of my life, I had always been someone that I felt like I had to like prove myself. I come up from an inner city background. Uh, opportunities were very slim. The only way out was like, hey, you got to be good at sports if you want to get out of the hood. Like that's it. I really didn't know any other way um, to make it out. And I always, you know, I, I was section eight housing. So like, you know, I didn't have the best of homes growing up. Uh, you in know, Columbus, were you in Columbus? Yeah, I was in Columbus. Yeah, I was okay. in Columbus. So, um, yeah, my, my parents divorced. And, you know, at that point, then we, we were in separate homes. And um, my father ended up having the home that we grew up in, which wasn't bad at all. But then uh, my mother ended up getting custody of me. And then that's where, like, I grew up in like a really, you know, rough area of town, you know, gang violence, all that fun stuff that you hear about, um, you know, in the inner city, uh, where I felt like I always had to kind of like prove myself because I, I just came from from nothing. And a lot of part of my life, I always was trying to feed that energy of like, oh, just prove myself that I'm not poor, prove myself that I'm not, you know, uh, you know, uh, less fortunate and all those, because it's, it's not a good feeling as a kid, right? You see people that have things and it's just something that you, uh, you end up uh, kind of falling, you know, victim to. And, uh, but you didn't want to play the victim. You didn't want to play the victim. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep, exactly. Mm. And and I, uh, I always found that that was so draining, uh, to not be my authentic self and, um, not always like conforming to whatever, you know, the mood or energy was in the room versus like being my own energy. Okay. And, um, meaning, meaning if you don't care if I touch on that, you mean like, so if you're around other, other, like the, a more like hood kind of mentality as a generalization, right? Like being hard shit like that, you wanted yeah. to be more like explain yeah, that not, a little so bit more yeah, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ex express my feelings right now you know what i mean like i kind of grew up like rigid like that or and then i i was still in my, my mother was progressing her life at the time where we were able to move into a suburb which is a completely culture shock for me going from inner city columbus to now i'm living in um uh a suburb where you know i'm meeting people who have the homes that are the size of the apartment building that I once came from and uh and like now I'm in this identity crisis of like oh I'm not poor you know what I mean I, I'm I'm I have to fake it now like I like we have money even though we don't have no money <laughs> uh so I, I've always been conforming to like that like like those different energies right and that's taxing right to not you know be able to accept like hey this is where I am either you're going to accept who I am or you're not I'm not going to try to like fit the mold I'm not going to try you know what I mean that that was me all the way up until I want to say about 25 27 oh damn yeah you just um, don't you you can't feel you don't ever feel like content or safe you know what i'm yeah, saying exactly yeah which is an energy drain but then once i hit rock bottom at 27 which is a whole other story that we can go down into um i realized i'm like okay what what the hell am i doing you know what i mean like how do i better show up for myself you know what i mean because clearly showing up for other people trying to be life and party all the time like that's just not not the way, right? So how do I get my energy back? How do I show up for myself better? So then that way, you know, no matter who's in the room, I don't care. You know, I'm still genuinely and authentically myself regardless. And it's taking away so much stress, but that's kind of how I got into that place where, you know, a lot of times what comes up as you think about this and a lot of people, you know, this is what they struggle with. It's like, I don't want to be selfish with my time, but it's like, Hey, if you're not selfish with your time and how you uh, give back to yourself, who is, who's going to be that for you? You know what I mean? And should that be something that you're expecting from someone else, right? As you begin to have that growth mindset, 
And um, that's where I was like, hey, priority number one is me, right? Because if I'm not giving myself what I need to to uh, have in order to be at my best, then I'm not going to be able to show up better for you know you, Matt. I'm not going to be able to show up better for my kids, whoever it is. Like I'm, I'm not going to be able to be at my best because I'm always going to feel like there's that lack there. And that's kind of like where I got to like the energy balance, and I found things that really work for me. And here's the thing, you guys, you got to take action on that. Try different things. Find out what works, what doesn't work. And as you do, as you do that, you'll narrow down how to best calibrate your energy. So for me. My inner child is at full play. And that's how skydiving comes in, in into things. Like I, I need to be able to joke around. I need to be able to have a bunch of fun. I need to have like that just because, um, you know, I experienced ADHD and I say I experienced it because I don't have it, right? It's something that I experienced. Um, I have ADHD and, and like I have a ton of energy as is. So I got to figure out a way to calibrate that in a way that still allows me to be productive and use that almost as a superpower. And that's why I get up at 4.45 in the morning because I'm like, I got a lot of energy to expend over the day. Like yeah, yeah. For, me, for me to be able to like burn through it and make it productive, I need to get up a little bit earlier and be more organized with my day where, um, where now, you know, that's how I kind of, I, I got into skydiving because, you know, uh, going around being more productive, uh, one thing that I wanted to focus on was attention to detail. So, um, you know, how do I not, you know, just be careless with, you know, my day-to-day actions and how do I, how am I more intentional and focused on a different things than I am. And with skydiving, like attention to details, like the number one key trait you need to have yeah. is a guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good incentive, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's like, you know, uh, you know, I need to be altitude aware. So as I'm falling at 125 miles an hour out of the sky, like I need to make sure that I'm checking my altimeter to make sure that, you know, before 3,500 feet, I'm pulling my parachute. And if I don't pull my parachute, then I die. Right. Or just understanding um, you know, doing a practice touch as I jump out of the plane to make sure I can reach and know where my pilot sheet is. So then when I throw my parachute, it deploys. Um, like all those fun things um, are, are, are uh, attention to detail. You know, when you pull your parachute, all right, how do you make sure your parachute is, is functioning? Okay, I look up, are all seven of my cells open? Yeah, they're open. So you have a functioning parachute. Test your steering, go right, 90 degrees. Come up, all right, go left, 90 degrees. Now flare. So when you land, you know your parachute flares. Like all those things are attention to detail where, yeah, while doing skydiving, like I'm an adrenaline junkie, but there's also a purpose behind it. And that's kind of like how I've approached a lot of things in my life is like, you know, I'm gonna have fun with this. But at the same time, like there's something that I'm grasping because it's going to help build upon who I am as a person and how I can best show up for not only myself, but for others. And attention to detail is, is one of those things. I don't want to leave my kids, um, you know, forget that they had work and forget to pick them up or something crazy like that. Right. You know, sure, which is crazy. Sure. My kids work. They had, my kids got a job like two weeks ago, which I'm still trying to process mentally. Like, let's go. I have kids, I have how how old? Jobs. 14. Yeah. So right, let's go. In, that's they're uh, in high school. Yeah, they're ready. So, they're ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so funny, but yeah, that's kind of like how I've gotten to a place. Where I just balance my energy and like with all like the, the extreme sports and stuff that I do, I got to have the balance to, to make sure that, you know, I, I, I'm setting myself up for, for that type of energy. So calm, I, I do meditation uh, right. you know, over the past, you know, you know, I calm the noise on Instagram. I got caught up in like likes. I was like, man, getting pissed off because I know their algorithm is like, you know, they show 10% of your audience, your posts yeah. until a certain amount of metrics are hit. And yeah. then they show it to the rest. So I was getting pissed because I'm like, man, I'm creating all this dope content. And like, it's not reaching as many people I, as I know it can reach. And like, sure when I realized that I was getting caught up in that rather than just creating good content, no matter who looks at it and just putting that out there for a resource with someone, I started to notice I was losing focus um, and, and, and where I wanted to go with why I do what I do. And that's how I was like, you know what, I'm going to take a break from Instagram and I'm going to focus on email marketing, which is something that sure. um, you know a lot about. Carter yeah. has helped me out with that as well, where that's where I know I own hundred percent of that audience and I can create content and quit worrying about who sees it because at, well, you still got to look at like who opens it and click on a lot of fun stuff. Sure, sure. At, at least you know that you know it's it's available to them if they if they if they want it and they'll they'll have that uh, ability to be able to see it right. So shifting some of my focus in my business to other things that are also important. Right, um, right, right. Out of the social media is kind of like why I stepped away and just recalibrated myself where I've been focusing on giving my my energy back and you know again yeah putting you putting you stuff. first like going exactly. going off of social media like that's a big move for yourself right like it's gonna it's gonna help put energy yeah. back into you and then whenever you're ready you can come back and then you can yep. pr- produce some dope shit you know yeah and i've been and i've been creating some dope shit while i've been going through i focus on uh right now my focus is a bunch i'm creating these mindset modules for my business so then as well so as our clients like progress through 
you know, the, obviously the physical fitness aspect, they can also tap into the mindset because I'm huge on the mindset where I realize that I don't have any evergreen resources for my clients to tap into when, um, when they are facing, you know, let's say they're getting, you know, that they experience that self doubt or they are trying to build a new habit and don't know the process or the way to do that. Like creating modules to train them through that is, uh, has been my focus as I've been away too, which has been, which has been wild. Um, sure, because sure. I have an assistant coach in my business who I create the content. Um, she creates the deck that presents the content and then I record over it. So, yeah. um, so it's been really good. And I've also been able to, you know, tap into my, my current clients, um, and make sure that, that they have everything that they need. And, and it's been a real good time. It's kind of re- hit the reset button and recalibrate myself, which is awesome that I'm able to do that because I do have a full-time uh, job right. as well. So it gives me the time to be able to do that. Right. I, I'm fully aware that that's a, that's a blessing because, you know, it's not everybody has that as an opportunity, you know, um, sure. you know, when sure. you're all in on your business and that's the only source of your income, uh, or, or I guess not the only source, but the the main source of your income, it can yeah. be challenging to take those breaks. Right. And it, and it can require a lot. So, of course, um, so yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. And one thing I did want to touch on, as you were talking about with, with energy management and attention to detail too, was your uh, environment at home because I know so if you if you follow James and shit like you'll see him he's always just vibing either by himself or with other people it doesn't matter yeah. it's just it's him <laughs> just dancing chilling in his apartment which is which is sick by the way the the view is awesome <laughs> and I love how yeah talk about your you have like mood lights and shit or whatever like it's yeah. just it's cool yeah just like what was this like yeah what's the what's your thinking behind all of that yeah so th- this actually everyone in 2020 was in their home more than ever. And with me, you know, experiencing ADHD, I'm always gone. Like, I'm like, oh, I can't sit here. I got to freaking move and release some of this energy where in 2020, it really, like, I was like, okay, I need to do more uh, with my apartment. It's very bland. Um, and I actually didn't live in this apartment at the time, but it started in my the apartment. It started with plants. So you see, I got to, I become a plant dad. So I'm a plant there daddy. You, I got this, I got go. this, uh, what is that? A snake plant behind me. I have uh, two of those. I also have a ZZ plant that's somewhere around here. Are they real? Um, they're all real, bro. I'm like, and here's I got the a thing. fake. I got a fake ficus right here. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is like I get the plants that thrive off of neglect because I know I am always gone. I'm never <laughs> in Columbus, so I like, thrive I off neglect. Are, like, yeah, basically. So like, I got. I, I've been propagating. So if you can see that right there, yeah. I propagated my ZZ, which I'm like. Who the hell would have thought in a million years I'd be propagating some plants? Like I don't even, I don't even know what that means, but I, but someone told me like, oh, you can do this because that leaf fell off, and like, oh, just propagate it. I'm like, okay, yeah, what the hell does that mean? Like from the hood oh, yeah, to propagating so. plants, bro. That's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, so yeah, man, going back to like the 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 space and energy for which, like, I spend a lot of time here. I work from home, so I realize like if I'm gonna be here, like I need to cultivate my vibe. Like that's something that I've always like done where, where like. Uh, like one thing is, is like you mentioned the lights. So I have the lights and I have like floodlights that are, uh, they have multiple colors and I've set them, I've split my, my home up into different sections. So I have like my kitchen, my working space, you know, uh, my living room, the hallways, like they all have their own, uh, collective, uh, unit of lights where I just set it up to be whatever mood. But, um, when the day is over, like, you know, I'll sometimes just sit here and I'll just vibe out, you know, I love house music. Um, super in the house music because it, it it allows me to work not only in a rhythm, um, it, it doesn't have words to it, so I don't get distracted with words. I'm like, oh yeah. damn, that was a dope lyric. Let me rewind that. You know, I don't lose that focus because I can easily easily do that. Um, but yeah, man, and, and creating like you know the the pictures over here that say grind, hustle, execute. Like, so I'm always thinking about you know those things. Like I, I see that you know often. So and it has a definition for each. I'm a huge Drake fan. I, uh, he has. Um, a couple pictures in my place that I have that kind of represent that. But um, I, I like to create energy. And then when I invite people over, I also like to to make people feel at home. I, I call it like Zen vibes, like yeah. um, to, to be able to like, people are always, they come over like, man, you like your place is always just like comfortable. And I'm like, yes, like that, that's my goal because that's what I wanted for myself and anybody that also comes to my home to, to feel at peace, relaxed. Uh, because it's, you know, life is stressful. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a way to like kind of recalibrate yourself um, or you're I, not creating a vibe that allows you to settle in and sink in, it can make it challenging to to get there, right? Bro, the home, the home has to be home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, out exactly. of all, it has to be the safe spot. If there's one place yeah. that can be yeah. a safe spot in your place, it's like, it's it's gotta be your house. And I think that 
there's something to be said about just overall well-being, mood, energy. Of course, like I know we we work from home and things, and and I, I know yeah. a lot of people listening to this probably do too, actually, especially with yeah. Corona and shit. And it's just like making your house pretty and making it beautiful and making it yeah. exact like match kind of the energies that that you want to yeah. to put out like there's a reason why you go into certain homes and you're just like oh it's cozy right, right. and it's like you see the you see the blank walls behind me i've got pictures that i'm about to i'm about to put up because i'm just <laughs> like i don't care as much about like having blank walls until yeah, <laughs> until I don't care about it until though until I put shit up and then I see it and then I or, yeah. or I go into a place that's really well decorated and I'm just like the energy just feels better you know what I'm saying yeah. and just you can yeah. feel it instantly and it's just it's yeah. just gonna make for a better experience yeah I used to not give a shit at all like, like that's what I'm saying about, about, about my place until until like I, I realized that and and this is like for those that are listening like you don't have to have like some immaculate place to do this like I I. I've lived in plenty of places that, you know, weren't ideal for myself at the time uh, where I didn't have anything. But I just imagine, like, if I would have just given it a little bit of TLC, how much better would I have felt in that in that place, right? That's one thing that I always go back to is, like, and you can it can be something as simple as plants, pictures, something that reminds you of, like, kind of who you are. Um, I, I have a, a white, even in my board, I have a whiteboard that I just kind of have, like, things that I can visually see. Um, to kind of remind me, you know, my focus is remind me of kind of like my energy, right? Like, like to see those visual, and I realize I'm a visual person, like they just remind you of kind of like why you are, who you are. Like when you start decorating your place, like you have unique things. Like I even have a, a picture. I was in C- San Diego for like a men's, um, which I don't know if you, I don't know if you were following each other at the time. But I think I, I saw, I think I saw. Yeah. Okay, I'm not a painter, but all, um, here I'll go grab it really quick. Yeah, go, go, go. No, I'll, I'll, I'll fill the dead air. This is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I think so I like. Oh, there we go. So this is what I. So this is what I paint. I had this in my Zen corner, so I got a Zen corner in my apartment. Let's as go. Well, where like I have like a yoga mat where I stretch and do all that fun stuff. But yeah, I paint. I painted this the other uh, month. Fuck yeah. Uh, and, and and it just represents you know the hero's journey for me. So you got the uh, the the, uh, the inner child. You got the warrior, you got the kingdom, and then you got the wise man. And like all those represent different aspects of kind of where I've been in my life. And like to have those as a visual representation, like just sometimes I just like get up and I just think about that. And I look at the picture and I reflect. And it's just like going back to cultivating your vibe in your your living space because you spend a a lot of time there. Um, It's something that could be that's so simple to do but that has a lot of impact on your energy and how you mm. show up. And the, and the painting, bro, it's just like anybody listening to this, when's the last time you painted anything? When's mm-hmm. the last time you drew anything? You know what I'm saying? Like, And just, I'm not artistic. This is a, It like, doesn't matter. Most people, most people don't even know what this is. But for me, I know what all of it represents. It's for you. Tell, tell it's for you. It. Yeah, it's for yeah, you. Exactly. Like even just seeing that, exactly. I'm like, oh, that's a cool, like, it, you know, it's got to mean something, right? And then yeah. to you, that's what matters, right? This is the energy for me. So it's like, I'm going to yeah. paint this shit. And then it, it it probably takes you back to that experience with your people exactly. and with the other dudes. And it's just like, yeah, man, that's, yeah. that's, that's awesome. I love that shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's, I mean, I've been more into it. My kids, they love it, obviously, too. Like they're, they're, we're, we're, chill, we're chilling here. And like they like the lights, obviously too. And like, <laughs> do you guys just vibe? Do you? I mean, because I know, I I know you're not brothers, but like, do you? Because uh, now they're at their age, that age. I feel like I, I'm I'm curious. Do they see you more as like like oh I'm gonna chill with my dad, or is it kind of like because I know teenager age they're like oh dad's older, he's not cool, uh-huh. he's whatever, right? How's kind of if you don't mind sharing? I think it's just interesting the relationship there. Yeah, our dynamic is really fluid. So um, because I am closer in age, so I was 19 when I had them. Um, so they're just under 20 years younger uh, than me. So when you think about that, like I like the things I like, I can remember my freshman year in high school. Like that wasn't too far <laughs> away for me to be able to remember like what I was doing as a freshman and whatnot. So the I, I think the age, the the lack of gap, I guess, in the age difference between us allows me to be able to relate to them at a, at a different level, let's say, than if I would have had them when I was like 30 or something like that. And let, you know what let, I mean? let them know, hey, you ain't slick, bro. I know yeah, what you're yeah. doing. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, so it's created a, a, a really fluid dynamic between us to where um, I, I I've realized as a, as a parent that it's important to really allow your kids to make choices within reason, right? Um, I'm not controlling at all. Like, if they have a disagreement, they're allowed to question it. You're allowed to question me. So what, as long as they're doing it respectfully, right? They're not gonna be like, well, what the fuck, dad? You know, you're like, none of that. But right. like as long as as long as they question things responsibly, um, we'll talk about it. And, and what I've realized is it's helped them better understand. 
Um, it's going to build their confidence to make decisions as they get older, um, you know, uh, and, and really ultimately allow them to, to be leaders of their life. Right. Um, because, yeah, I'm their father. But at the same time, they're still an individual and their life journey is going to look different from mine where I, you know, I give them options. I'm like, hey, like I always give them options, even if it's like something as simple as like, you know, for, for dinner. Right. What, what do you guys want for dinner? Like, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I got. Like, you guys let me know. And I let them choose, even though I could be like, yeah, we're having steak tonight. And that's what it is. Right. I give them the the uh, the autonomy, Auto- autonomy to make yeah. small, yeah, to make small decisions. So they're confident in the decisions that they make each day. So we have a very fluid relationship. Um, they still see me obviously as their father and they, they, they have a, a, a ton of respect, but I also am not like, you know, Oh, I'm not a big, like say, yes, sir. No, I, that's just not me. I, I, sure, it's not sure. how I am, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, so I, they don't ever have to do that, but they're so it, it's crazy. I'll sit back and just kind of like watch them interact when we're in public. And like, it's just rewarding to see, you know, me being a young father, how well my kids have grown up. It was crazy. I was looking at their grades today, their, their first quarter in high school, my one son, Landon, has he has four B's and two A's. My other son, Cameron, has five A's and, and two B's. So they're doing exceptionally well in school. And they're, and they're in a really good school district. They're in like one of the top 25 school districts in the United States. And for them to be doing that well, it's just like goes back to circle. Like, you know, you don't control your kids. You need to understand your kids, give them options um, and allow them to make decisions. So we have a very fluid relationship. Um, yesterday. My son, I had to tell my son seven times to do something. Like I counted and like not do one thing. It was like multiple things that he just wasn't listening. So I, I don't have to necessarily whoop my kids in order for them to understand. Like yeah. I'm not against it, but I'm also not. It's not the first, the first thing that I go sure. to. So it's like, all right, cool, bro. You're gonna do 15 minute wall sits now, and and that's what you're gonna do to, to <laughs> yeah. because you don't want to listen. And like it, it's funny because it's like, hey, I can whoop your ass, or you can do these wall sits. Yeah. And it's like, man, I almost want to do the, the ass whooping because these wall sits suck. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's to a it's to a point to where like, I mean, if you do wall sits for 15 minutes, I mean, it's agonizing. Like your muscles are locking up and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm building my son's legs right now. I'm getting him mentally tough, and then I'm letting him know like. Quit fucking not listening like uh, parenting right there good. i love it yeah so, so yeah <laughs> man, we had a, we have a pretty cool relationship um and, and they're respectful to everyone i'll get out of chance and you'll meet them at some point but um we went down to austin uh I, I took them there for the spring break we spent a whole week there and just you can ask carter seeing how they interact just with everybody they're very respectful um i love you know, it who, who knows if they cuss when i'm not around i don't really care just as long as they're not cussing when i'm uh, president or whatnot, but <laughs> yeah. I could imagine. I mean, when I was a freshman high school, I was custom like a sailor, so I could imagine that they're probably doing the same thing. But the biggest thing that I always tell them is know your audience, right? Um, and, and, and know how how you should be acting and carrying yourself um, when when you're out in public and I'm not around. So no, that's, I that's love all it. I ask is don't be fucking embarrassing me and shit. But uh, with <laughs> yeah. They, they, yeah. they're really solid because I get compliments all the time, I, and I can't wonder, I can't decipher it because they think they're younger than what they are or whatnot. But I'm just going and basing it off of just being able to have a, a fluid relationship with them, where they're allowed to make decisions and and be their own human. Yeah, no, man, I I love it. I I I really think that's beautiful, and I think it's you know it's it's of course they're they're going to be autonomous, but I think it's a it's a big. Um, it's a big reflection on who you are as a person too, because that's the biggest thing, right? It's just yeah. like they're going to be, they're going to be mirrors in many ways. They're going to see you the way that yep. you act, the way that you interact with people, your energy and stuff like that. And it's like, for the most part, they're probably gonna, they're gonna follow suit accordingly. Yeah, and, I, and that's another th- the thing you talk about, like being mirrors too. Like, like I, I don't force my kids anything. Like, so I was a big athlete. I played football, ran track in high school. Like, my kids they just do track, and I never, I never was like, yo, you have to do sports, like. Right. I don't do like I'm like, hey, if you're gonna do something this because you want to, and then when you commit to make that decision to do it, you do your best, right? So they uh they run track uh in, in, in high school. I did it all all through since they're about eight. But um I never forced them to, like even you know, uh with working out. So they're 14 and we have a gym in our apartment and um and they go and work out on their own. They're like, We don't need your workout, dad. Like, we have our own workout. I'm like, all right, cool, like all that's right. fine. But right. our habits, like, you know, as adults that we create, like our kids are subject to them. So if you're living a healthy lifestyle and you're consistently doing that, that's all your kids are going to know. And they're going to live a healthy lifestyle. If you're just eating whatever the hell you want, not being active uh, and, and you're just being lazy as fuck watching TV, guess what your kids are going to do? They're, gonna, they're going to grow up that same exact way. And that's why you see a lot of health issues are genetically passed on throughout generations is because you as, like, as a kid, you're going to follow and you're subject to your parents' habits because they're the ones that's raising you where 
a lot of people are like, well, you know, I'm fine with where I'm at. Well, I'm like, all right, cool. You're fine with your app. But what about your kids? Like, how are they going to grow sure. up? And, and, you know, what's going to be the impact on their life? Are they going to be the ones that are subject to, you know, high cholesterol and all that crazy stuff that happens, you know, heart failure, if you don't take care of yourself. Yeah. And, um, it, it's awesome to see how that has transpired. I'm a living example of like, you know, my kids, they work out, they have their own workout schedule. Um, my son yesterday didn't do leg day and we were all giving him shit because I did leg day yesterday. I mentioned that my son had leg day and we're like, yo, bro, you didn't do legs. Like, and he has some excuse and we were like, we don't want to hear your excuse. Like you already know where we stand. It's kind of cool to, <laughs> yeah. to see that right now. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, fall him for that. I'm just like, Hey, you make whatever decision, you know, just know you have to live with the consequences of it. And oh yeah. That's it. That's all going to be you. So that's, yeah, man, that's it, it. It, it's cool. That's a, That's awesome. I think <clears throat> that right there is a perfect is a perfect bow on it it's just like hey listen you you can make a hundred percent of your choices you can be fully autonomous just know that whatever you decide to do or not do it's like you've got to accept the consequences that come with that bro i think that that's, I, I like I, that too i always tell people i'm like our our as humans our number one most uh i guess uh uh power that we have is the ability to make a decision the ability to choose right because we we get to ultimately create our realities and uh, your habits, your choices are going to either have you uh, be who you want to be, or they're going to have you exactly where you don't want to be. And I've been on both sides. I've been exactly who I don't want to be. And I had that realization that clicked. So I said, okay, I need to do something. There's a Tony Robbins quote. It says like, uh, um, it's something along the lines of like, uh, change will happen when the pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain of changing. Right. Right. Um, and that's when change occurs. And that it is that for me, I'm like, it clicked. I'm like, that's exactly how it happened for myself. And that's exactly how it happened for any listeners. It's like, when you get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm fed up with where I am, that's when you'll change. But until then, you'll just remain the same. You'll continue to have the same habits and be the same individual. So, yeah, I love it, man. I love it. All right. We're going to, we're going to wrap this up here in just a second, but I do want to ask, uh, actually I have, I have two questions for you real quick. The first one okay. is going to be, um, what is, what is, this could be, this could be personal, this could be business, whatever, but what is something that is exciting you about the future? Is there anything coming up, you know, whatever, you're going to skydive off the, the, the tallest building in the world or some shit. I don't know what you're going to do, but is there, I just like to hear, uh, you know, with all the negativity and shit that can go on in the world today, I just like to hear what people are excited about, uh, in yeah, the future. I'm excited for this damn DJ board to get here today because like, there's something <laughs> that I, that's been on my mind. Uh, so it, it, it's uh, it's a hobby, and I and I always tell people, man, you got to balance life. You got to have something. You got to do something that that is going to excite you and, and going to be fun, right? Because it can be a very dull life if you don't if you don't find that. Um, so I'm excited to, to tap into, and, and I'm not a DJ at all. I just like music, and I just want to explore the area. You know, I, I've been a huge part of music my whole life. My father, um, uh, you know, he's played at the jazz festival here in, in Columbus, um, and he's been you know in reggae bands growing up as a kid. And um, I've just always been around music. So I'm just excited to explore music in this way um, coming up because it's going to get cold here soon. I hate the winter. I don't like I don't like anything below 60 degrees. Yeah, um, it's not for me. And that's why I got to move here soon. But, um, <laughs> I feel but yeah, I'm super I'm super pumped to, uh, to explore this this new avenue uh, that, I, that I'm uh, tapping into. So. Uh, no, no, that, that that'll be dope. Are you just gonna be making beats? Or are you gonna are you gonna spit bars? Like, what are we what are we talking no, here? No, just we, just beats? we're just gonna just be mixing stuff, just like <laughs> playing around with the DJ board and just seeing how to use it. I don't even know how to use it. I just like I'm like I'll figure it out. Just kind of like with everything, right? Like you take yeah. action, and you figure it out. <laughs> uh, and and with the beats board, you're gonna. I mean, you you know, you have endless amounts of things that you could do with it. So you can just be chilling and then just get into a groove and just start making yeah. shit. Yeah, no, that, exactly. that's awesome. I love you got it. Options. I love it. I love it. Okay. And then the, uh, the, the last question is, so, um, if you could choose anything else to do, right. And this is, let's say you could have any skill set, right. You could be two feet taller. You could be faster. You could be what, you know, you could be funnier, whatever it is. If there was any other career choice that you could choose besides the one that you're in, what mm -hmm. would you do? Yeah, that's a really good question. I never thought about that. Cause I was just like, Hey, this is what I'm focused on, but uh, I'll give you a second. Mine, so mine would be, I would love to be a stand up comic. Like, I would love to be a yeah. famous, like, stand up comic in the arenas and shit and everything, just being up on stage. I couldn't imagine a much better feeling than you being the sole attention on an, in an arena or some shit, right? 
in yeah. Madison Square Garden and you're just making thousands of people laugh, right? Just based yeah. off of stuff that you say. So it's just like for me, I think being like a really famous stand-up comedian would be would be incredible. But now yeah. what do you what do you think? What's your Yeah, I think like because I'm like, I love like the extreme like sports. I I would like to do like motocross. Like mm. I feel like guys that do that like are freaking insane because I mean like the probability of injuring yourself in that now that's high. Like that's not like skydiving. That's <laughs> sure. like crazy. Even if you're doing backflips, like I would love to be like a pro BMX like not BMX motocross uh, right. athlete. Like just be like something like that because I mean it's still low key. Like you're not like super famous. Only people that are in the industry are gonna know. But like I always look at those guys and they just like they're always just like super extreme fun people to be around just like high energy and like yes. just fearless you know what i yeah. mean like so I, I would love to do that like like get into some some, some uh motocross and just like that's jumping dope. high and doing backflips you know that's something that i feel like would uh would be high i mean and that'd be my main thing that'd be the only way that i made money and i was just really good at it like i would just love to do that and just travel and do that and that would be like yeah something that Damn. i would that i would that i would Damn. With heavy James is James is breaking all the stereotypes out here. I was not thinking that you were gonna. I, I was not thinking you were gonna say motocross, right? You know, yeah. it's just like it, I just I, I I don't I don't think of that. But I you know yeah. it's it, you're 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 uh, you're all about it, and you you know that's you're, funny. I was at the barbershop earlier. I know we were coming up on time, but I was at the barbershop earlier, and they they know that I skydive, and they're like, "You don't see any black people there, do you?" I'm like, "Nah." <laughs> so, yeah. I was like, it's just, "I was like, it's just me." <laughs> I was like, you you said it. You said it, not me. You know, it's just, <laughs> that's what I was thinking in my yeah. head. A guy, a guy said that to me today in the barber shop because uh, he was mentioning that he uh, he uh, scuba dives, which or not scuba dives, but deep sea dives, which is my oh. next thing, like my next big thing, which is years down the road. Sure, uh, as I continue to explore skydiving, but but he's like, yeah, man, he's like, I bet you don't see too many black people there. I was like, nah, I was like, I'm usually the only one, but it's all good. I was like, they, I was like, they embrace it. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, exp- so, expanding, exp- expanding the demographic. I love it. Right. Um, right. Cool. All right, James. This is. Hey, well, this hey is, wait a minute. Before you hop off, what's up? We, I, I don't know if you if you know or not, but on a left of the Friendsgiving, eleven five skydiving is going down. Well, I'm taking everybody skydiving down in Austin. We already got a group of three. Carter's going. No, you're fucking right, lying. To your, to your audience right now, are you joining the crew or not? <laughs> no, I, bro. I, I swear to God. Bro, I, no, you can't put me on the spot on my own no, audience. I'm putting you on the spot. We got one minute. You got one minute to say yes no. or no. Now, are you facing your fears? Are bro, you going to soft and like, what you're listen, scared man. of, man? I'm serious. I will fucking pass out. Like, I will pass out on the plane before we ever go. I swear to you, I will pass out. I w- Listen, here's the thing, bro. Like, I don't, I don't want to be afraid of heights. Like, I don't want to. Like, I don't like it. It's just, a, it's just like, you put my head underwater, I'm going to drown. You put me in a plane, I'm freaking out if I'm looking over the edge about to jump out. You know, it's just... Close your eyes. It's just no, 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 no. I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, listen. We're gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna defer on this one. We're gonna talk after this podcast. We're gonna turn. We're gonna turn this off, and we're gonna talk more. But <laughs> real quick for the people, where uh, where can they find out more about you and and what you do? Yeah. So you guys can uh, can find me on Instagram. I'll be back. I'll actually be back on Instagram in the beginning of November. Uh, so my Instagram is James Manley, uh, spelled James like in the Bible, last name Manley, M-A-N-L-E-Y dot underscore. Um, you'll be able to find my account, hit the follow button, shoot me a message and say, I, fa- I, I heard you on, um, on Matt's podcast and yeah. I'll definitely respond, connect. I, I do try to connect with everyone on there. Um, it's not like I have a crazy following, so it's easy to stay in contact. So hit me up there. I'm um, sure. never have any questions, but yeah, that's where you can find me. Uh, once I get back home, which will be in no in November. So first week in November, I'll be back. Perfect, and I'll put the I'll put that link in the description. You can say hello. Definitely check him out. The stuff's amazing. The vibes are immaculate. The energy is perfect. <laughs> uh, James, bro, this was perfect. We'll definitely do it again soon, and I'll see you very soon. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk for a couple minutes off air. But yeah, thank you, man, so much for doing this. I appreciate it. About bro, man. Appreciate you.